following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a great show lined up. Based on a lot of feedback from our listeners on last week, where we were talking about Federal Reserve and Federal Reserve policy, I decided to continue with that theme on today's show. So we're glad you joined us on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern. I'm going to do a little bit of recap on last week, but if you missed last week's show, head on over to our website, which is www.dlblaine.com. There you'll find information on my firm as well as archived copies of the show. And it is working today. I don't know if you heard yesterday the hacker group Anonymous uh, targeted GoDaddy servers, which is where our website is hosted, and along with millions of other small businesses around the country, and, and knocked them out for, for several hours. I'm not sure what point those folks are trying to prove, but um, they end up hurting a lot of uh, small businesses that rely on the Internet to... Uh, to run their companies, and uh, I'm not sure who they're trying to gain favor with, but it's certainly not uh, with most people. Anyway, so website is up and running today. Also, uh, today is uh, September the 11th, 2012, as I'm recording this, and I hope that uh, everyone has a chance to, if you didn't uh, on September the 11th, to go ahead and take a moment and remember those whose lives were lost uh, during the terrorist attacks of 9-11 uh, in New York, the Pentagon, and Pennsylvania, as well as the lives have been lost uh, ever since then fighting the, the war on terror. Whether you uh, agree with it or not, we have lost a lot of servicemen and women uh, since that fateful day, September 11th. So take a few moments out and uh, remember those whose lives have been lost. Okay, um, last week we talked about, uh, I started the show with uh, uh, talking about the, uh, the drama Faust. If you've never heard of Faust, it's a, a German uh, drama that was written in the 1830s. And it's just, you read this, and, and I love history, financial history, all sorts of history, because as you go back in history, you find clues as to what's going on today, and, and you see that... Um, in, in a lot of thought, there really is nothing new. We're going to talk later on uh, in the show, we're going to talk a little bit about a guy by the name of David Hume who wrote uh, back in the 1700s of public finance and how the principles that he had are so applicable today and the same thing with this drama of Faust. Anyway, the devil persuades this bankrupt emperor to print and spend vast quantities of paper money as a fix for his country's fiscal problems. And as a consequence, the, the empire ultimately unravels and descends into chaos. And, you know, I could substitute, you know, the devil persuades to, you know, the Congress persuades Bernanke or Bernanke persuades Congress or whatever. This is exactly what's going on today. And I went through and I talked about the history of the central bank, how it was originally started in Europe so that merchants could put their gold in a bank and instead of hauling, you know, tons and tons of gold overseas as they engaged in commerce, that they could take uh, bank notes. And that people knew that, that there was gold on deposit in the central bank. And it evolved over the years and that our own central bank here in the U.S. is only about 100 years old. And that when it started, there were not treasuries backing uh, the, the currency it was also gold, and then we moved away from the gold standard, and then the Federal Reserve was allowed to take treasuries as backing for the currency to where we get uh, today. Uh, the, the Fed has undertaken a lot of asset purchases to bolster their, their balance sheet, and so instead of holding gold, they hold a lot of treasuries and other things, and their ratio, in the meanwhile, the continual printing of the money, and so this leverage ratio that had been typically around 20 to 1 uh, today, you know, stands around 50 to 1, and we have trillions of dollars of assets 
on the balance sheet that, that are not gold. And so we talked a little bit about um, the risk that that is should interest rates start to rise, the value of the Fed balance sheet would decline significantly because it owns a lot of treasuries and that the problems that that would, uh, that that would cause. So I don't want to completely review that um, today. If you missed that show, go on over to the website, uh, dlblaine.com, and, and you can catch up there. But it, it was a good show laying the basics for uh, the Federal Reserve and how the Federal Reserve works, a little bit of the history and things like that. And I want to, some of the things that people ask about, they said, well, you know, how could, could you expound on what is going on today with the Federal Reserve, what Bernanke's doing. We hear a lot of conflicting reports about flooding the system with money and quantitative easing and these type of things. And so I'll take my stab at it, uh, hopefully bring it down to a simple and, and basic level so that you can um, understand what's going on. Um, you know, if you have any questions about this, uh, feel free to give us a call. Uh, our number is 252-633-0107. Our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. There are some things, uh, once again, that's allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. I want to kind of get into some of the history of that today, but there are some moves that you can make to protect yourself from what the Federal Reserve is going on, and, and maybe we'll get into that in another show, uh, mostly looking at uh, real assets, uh, commodities, real estate, um, gold, things like that, staying away from long-dated treasuries. But I, I want to get back to sort of the history of, of some of this and talk a little bit about Keynesian economics. Um, really came into, into vogue under JFK um, in the 1960s. And one of the ma major tenets of Keynesian economics is what's called the Phillips Curve. And the Phillips Curve says that there's a stable but yet inverse relationship between the rate of inflation and unemployment. Basically means that if you have low, uh, you know, that, you, that there's this relationship between inflation and unemployment. And if you have um, low uh, unemployment, is a good thing and, and keeping trying to keep uh, inflation low. But anyway, the, at the time there was this fashionable uh, theory that you could um, improve the outcome of this trade-off between inflation and employment by using a more activist monetary and fiscal policy and that they contended that the unemployment could be lowered while only slightly raising uh, inflation to a higher level because normally as you uh, lower uh, unemployment then inflation would go up and so they they suggested that an activist monetary policy could sort of bend the rules on this well, we're coming up on our first break when we come back we'll continue talking about some of the things that the federal reserve is doing with monetary policy